Hi, my name is Leilani, and this is our channel Living with Eve. I am a former public and private school teacher. I homeschool now my four wonderful kids, one that has Down syndrome, and I also administer tests and evaluate homeschoolers in the state of Florida. I have been using IEW with my oldest children for approximately four years now, and I absolutely love this program. In this video, not only am I going to share with you some tips on how to use this curriculum easily, I'm also gonna do a flip through and show some examples. So make sure you stay to the end and watch the whole video so you have a full understanding on how we use it. First thing you need to know is IEW can be done as a standalone language arts program, and I totally did not believe this when I first got involved with IEW, but with a couple of their supplements, such as their spelling, which is their phonics, zoo, as well as their grammar, fix-it grammar, you can have a complete language arts curriculum. I will admit that in the beginning, I did supplement with Well-Trained Mind as well as Master Books, and I just realized after time that I don't really need them. In fact, this year, we are strictly going IEW for language arts with my fourth grader. The next thing you need to know is that IEW is a classical approach. All right, there's lots of different approaches. I'll stick an iCard up here to a playlist that will share with you different approaches, but I am just gonna totally admit to you, in more eclectic Charlotte Mason, and I only use the classical approach when it comes to writing for some reason. And that's why people are surprised that I like IEW because I'm not a very classical, type education person. I'm more, I'm very Charlotte Mason. When you attended public school and you did writing, how many of you guys actually liked your writing? Well, I should put my hand down because I didn't like my writing at all. Actually, I hated, I hated, I hated writing. When you're in the public school, they're teaching you the traditional method. You know, you want to write your five sentence paragraph, your three part essays, you learn about the different styles, then you have a total separate curriculum that teaches you all the grammars, and you have, you know, that flip through vocabulary book that you, you used to use when you were in public school or you may use with your child. Well, that gave you tools. It, it gave you a lot of tools. But what IEW does now is it teaches you how to use those tools. It teaches you how to use a rich vocabulary to write a good story. And you do this by studying, by mimicking, and using good classical literature. And that's, I guess, where my Charlotte Mason comes in because this is good literature that we're looking at. Think, think of it this way, right? You're going fishing. Well, the public school is gonna hand you a fishing rod, some worms, and a, actually they don't even hand you that stuff. They just kind of show you what it looks like on a worksheet and then show you somebody else doing it or the teacher does it herself and then maybe if you have time you try it out and you know nobody really cares to follow up with that. And that's kind of how I look at it in the public school well, and the traditional method as well. I mean, everything's kind of separate. The bucket of worms is over there. The fishing rod is over there. You know, the fish are somewhere in the water, right? How am I gonna get those babies, right? Well, what IAW does is they have a person stand next to you and show you how to correctly fish the right way. And then after they're done, they're gonna hand you that fishing rod, hand you the worms, and then you mimic them. But you try to do it better than them and the person showing you helps you to make it better than them. <laughs> That's kind of how I see IEW. Now you need to know this, IEW does have a pattern, a pattern that they use every single year. They go through the same pattern. This is just kind of how the classical approach works. Let me show you this because I have a couple of their books and it, it'll all make sense when I show you. I'm gonna share with you these two curriculums. The Bible Hero is made for your early elementary, and then ancient history-based writing lessons is made for your upper elementary, middle school level. Let's look at the table of contents. All right, first looking at the early elementary, unit one is gonna share with you key word outlining. Over here, lesson one is gonna share with you key word outlines. Unit two, is going to be writing from keyword outlines. Unit two, writing from keyword outlines, and you can kind of just get the idea, right? Now what's interesting, I will show you, skips over unit six, and it goes straight to unit seven. Middle school has unit six, seven, and they added eight, which is gonna be your formal essays and reports. Now they also have unit nine, which is gonna be your critiques. All right, here's a glance of unit one with the keyword outlining. This is your early elementary, and this is gonna be middle school, upper elementary. I love this. It starts off with a Bible verse, and then it's gonna tell you the goals right here. 
Keyword outline will help you gather information to write about and it will help you organize your thoughts. Here's your assignment that you're going to complete for the week. What you do with the keyword outline is you're going to circle the three most important words in the sentence. In this case, we had a hard time with four, so we had to use some abbreviations and it's totally okay to do that. In fact, when you first start this out in the teacher manual, they're going to give you a keyword outline that you can use to teach your kid with. After you do it, this is kind of what it looks like. There's some mistakes here and there, not a big deal. We're working through this and talking about it, but what he's going to do is they're going to go ahead and read this to you from the keyword outline as a report. They're not going to write it down. They're going to read it as a report because that's, that's what I love about IEW is it really stresses good presentations, being able to articulate what you want to say to an audience, to a person, to whomever. You learn about adjectives. It's not scary, right? Totally not scary. Talk about nouns and adjectives. You even get a song if you want to. You underline the great, amazing adjectives. And of course, if you want to practice, once again, the next week, you're going to get a source text. You're going to circle, make a keyword outline. That's it for unit one, two weeks, and then you move on to lesson two. Let's look at what they do in the middle school level. They're actually going to talk about the structure and style. You're going to read this together or have them read it on their own. You're going to introduce the key word outline as well as learning that there are some things that you need to abbreviate. Instead of writing just simple goals, they break it down day by day and they give you four vocabulary words. Here's your source text. Same pattern as we did when we were in elementary school. Totally looks the same, right? If you go back to the assignment, they are going to actually have you give an oral report from your keyword outline. Practice telling it back, the information one line at a time. There you go. Look at the line, then look up and talk about it, then look down at the next line, look up and talk about it. This is such an important skill. I, I use it like all the time doing YouTube. And, and we know how many kids want to be YouTubers now, right? Just saying. This is a look at another source text for middle school. And then you go into lesson two, the ancient world. There is also a structure and style bundle. I am not really familiar with that bundle, but I do know it comes with the DVDs as well as some literature, some other audio stuff. Andrew Poudwa is an amazing speaker. So if you have time, you have to listen to him speak because he, he will make you fall in love with IEW. <laughs> He's amazing. So what I did is I started with the primary arts of language, the writing portion of it. Now that came in a whole packet when I was teaching my daughter phonics. And I don't think you necessarily need to buy that program just to get it because it is, it's an introduction. So if you have a first or second grader or even a third or fourth grader, you want to start with either the Bible heroes curriculum or the people and places in our community curriculum, which seems to be the secular counterpart. When you first purchase this book, the first thing you want to do is look in the front. You will see a blue piece of paper and that's going to talk to you about your free downloads, which is awesome. You are going to have a student resource binder that you can download and that is to use forever. In fact, I didn't even use it with my first, second, third, fourth when we did those grades. I am going to start using it with fifth grade because we have a whole new curriculum and it's going to now come in handy. But like the other kids don't even use it. They have an appendix in the back with the, the same amount of information for their level. This right here is my son's student resource book. Like I said, I mean, we printed it out when he was young and we're not going to use it probably till this year. It talks about, you know, the breakup, the pattern, but it also talks about all the dress ups, which like I said, I'm going to talk about the dress ups at the end of the video when I show you some examples. Also, it comes with a teacher manual for the book. I did it. I made the mistake of buying a separate teacher manual, which you can buy, but you can get a free download from the IEW website. So just, you know, a heads up, FYI. The, the teacher manual kind of looks like this if you do buy printed. Um, this would be more for like the third, fourth grade level right here. But it's cool because it comes with all the instructions um, and it comes with some, you know, the vocabulary words that you're learning as well as some vocabulary worksheets, some crossword puzzles, some quizzes, as well as, you know, scope and sequence and, you know, year. 
at a glance, which comes in handy if you're that, you know, super planning type person and you want to see how you're going to make it through the year with this curriculum. I do like how the teacher manual really walks you through each lesson. So if you don't know anything about IEW and you never watch those DVDs, this is, it's walkthrough. It's open book walkthrough. I do want to take a second to look at the dress ups that they talk about throughout the entire book. They're teaching you very slowly the dress ups. It's how you can dress up the story. That's going to be your adjectives, your verbs, your L-Y adverbs. Then you've got stuff like the who, which clause, the very short sentences, the allegories, the alliteration, similes, that kind of stuff. And you don't learn all of that when you're in those early elementary days. Instead, actually, they focus in on those adjective verbs and L-Y adverbs, who, which clause. And I really think that's it for this book. Of course, at the end of each lesson, they're going to give you a checklist. This is actually the last lesson in the book. So this is going to be the hardest one for that first and second grader or third grader. So you get your adjectives, strong verbs, L-Y, no band words. You also have vocabulary words, two per lesson, and they encourage you to use them in your story, both of them. And believe it or not, IEW, they have games back here every week you're going to get to play some kind of game that you cut out and you do, especially for the elementary and middle school kids. I also want to show you the story sequencing chart because this is, you know, a kind of big deal. This is your beginning, middle, end. This is just one of the things that you're going to learn about as you do IEW and it, especially when you're learning about narratives. In the younger books, they do have the appendix. They have your banned words. These are words that you shouldn't use too often. And then they have the dress ups that you're focusing on for this book. Like I said, very small. There's like five. They have a small, small chart of quality adjectives compared to what you could have. Two pages. That's it. And you know what? We spend a lot of time on these two pages brainstorming and thinking of what adjectives would work well for the story that we're reading and trying them out, talking about them, building vocabulary. I mean, you can compare what the elementary appendix look like versus the student resource book, which I mean, this we're going to start using this year for fifth, sixth grade. <laughs> Big difference, right? <laughs> IEW is big about putting things on the wall so the kid can reference them whenever they have a chance or wherever they're writing. It's right there in front of them. Here's my dress ups that I have up on the wall. This is what we got out of the, um, the PAL program for kindergarten first grade. They kind of, you know, cut and paste. It was kind of fun just introducing this to them. I, I do the same with the story sequencing chart. It, it really comes in handy to have that right up there ready to go so they can look at. Oh, I do have a miracle story, which we love miracle stories. It's, and I knew this person personally. They were struggling with their son who was in public school and he couldn't write. He was the worst writer in his class. He was failing. His mom purposely pulled him out of high school to have him, you know, take some classes at some co-ops and homeschool for a year just to kind of catch him up. Well, he did take an IEW class at the co-op. And the next year she put him back into public school and he was the best writer in his class after one year of IEW. And I remember speaking to this mom and it was like miracle and praises to IEW. So if you are intimidated with this whole IEW program, there are so many co-ops out there that do have an IEW teacher that will walk you through it and walk your child through it. But, but quite frankly, it's really, it's not hard at all. It's just different. And yes, you have to be willing to change things up in the way you think about writing. Let me share with you an example, you know, one that my son wrote. This is his binder that we put together, this final copies of all his work. And I'll just show you, he does write multiple paragraph stories in here. And I'll give you a quick showdown of what it looks like. I'm not going to read all of it, okay? But it does look like this. And this is when he was in fourth grade. And it continues on the next page as well. But that was his final paper. Let me read you one that he wrote earlier on, probably like third grade, end of third grade, fourth grade. It's about Holland. It's called How to Be a Smart Hero. Holland is a lovely land marked with tiny tulips and towering windmills. Holland is also unusual because it's lower than sea level. Solid dikes keep water from flooding. Hans, who was a smart kid, lived in a Dutch village. Every day he paraded by the dike that helped his village stay up. 
One chilly morning, Hans was trotting to school and saw a hole in the dike. Hans quickly dashed to the hole and plugged it with his finger and yelled, Help! He sat for hours and hours. His finger felt sore and numb. Hans wanted to run home. Happily, Hans heard someone coming. He screamed help even louder. The man saw Hans and rapidly got some men to repair the hole and then everyone quickly congratulated Hans. Hans was now a hero. I'm not just trying to brag, but what he did is he did. He took the story and made it better by adding those dress ups. And, and actually, if you look at his story, he has all his dress ups underlined and written above so that we took time. We took time to find them all and talk about them. And, and yes, mom and dad, it does take time on your part. This is not an open the book, hand over to your child curriculum. You do have to spend time with them. But if you do it right and you have patience and you know what you're doing and you have fun with it, it's rewarding. I will admit that some of these are a little advanced for the age that they provide. For example, Bible Heroes is recommended for, I want to say, second, first, second grade. We did this with my son in third grade, and I know we did it at the co-op, actually. There were fourth and fifth graders and even a sixth grader in the class doing this, which is totally okay because you're laying that foundation of writing down. It doesn't matter, honestly, I think. It was perfect for those kids at that age. In conclusion, you don't have to be an English major to like this curriculum. <laughs> Honestly, you just have to be willing to change things up a little bit, play with the wording. In fact, honestly, I think it's much easier to use IEW when teaching writing than it is to use the traditional method of writing. It's more fun. You get to play with things. It's I didn't do that with English, but now I do it with my kids. It's really nerdy and cool and fun all at the same time. IAW is a great foundation to teach your kids the skills that they need in order to use those tools that they've learned. I think I've covered about everything. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. My name is Leilani. I'm gonna stick some videos around my face that you guys might be interested in. And uh, if you wanna join us on our journey, make sure to subscribe and click that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. And until then, I will see you guys on our next video. Bye.